67 to 71. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high 88 to 92, and partly sunny Wednesday, along with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm in spots, high 89 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Kevin Snyder. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 W-O-C-A. Ocala! All right, 19 minutes after 11 o'clock. Nice looking Monday. Hope you're doing well. How's your business? How is your business? Bryce Hoffman is on the phone. He's got a book called Red Teaming, How Your Business Can Conquer the Competition by Challenging Everything. Bryce is an award-winning financial journalist. He writes a regular column on leadership and culture for Forbes. He's a motivational speaker, a consultant, and a best-selling author. His book, again, is called Red Teaming. Good morning, Bryce Hoffman. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Pretty good. Where are you calling from? I am calling from Michigan, rural Michigan. So thank you for getting up a little bit early to be with us. I think that's Central Time, right, Robin? Yes. Central Time? Robin is from Wisconsin, so I have to always, I have to always ask Robin, oh. where, where does the timeline change? <laughs> I always forget. So uh, red teaming, what, what does the title mean? What does the title mean? So red teaming is a concept, Larry, that was developed by the military and intelligence agencies after 9-11 after they some of the painful lessons that they learned uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq they decided to, to develop a system to stress test strategies to make better decisions and to look at alternative ideas within their own organizations I became the first civilian to graduate in 2015 from the US Army's red team leaders program and I've ported this to business basically where I think it can be even more effective at helping businesses make better decisions stress test their strategies and adapt to what's become a really complex and ever-changing business environment okay um so, so break it down for us uh, so that we understand this. Uh, let, me get, let me give you an example. Let's say you, you live in a city, a town, uh, and there are 1,000 people in that town, and there are two restaurants. And the two restaurants seem to survive okay. They're in competition with each other, but they do. Now a third restaurant moves in. Now they're going to lose one-third or, so, or something. I don't know what the math is here, really. But they're going to lose some of their customers because the 1,000 people now have to go to three restaurants instead of two. Is there a way for you as one of the first two restaurants to, to um, fight that? I mean, it, how do you – I, I always wonder about this. When I see new businesses opening that are doing the same thing as other businesses, is there enough population to, um, to keep them all alive? Well, red teaming can help businesses of all sizes, Larry, and, and one of the ways that it helps is rather than waiting to be disrupted as a business, red teaming is about being proactive and, and asking yourself, for instance, if you, if you run a business, maybe we should, before somebody moves in and, uh, and takes a piece of our pie, why don't we think about what would happen if that occurred and come up with a way to, to kind of prepare for that ahead of time so that you're so that you're not reacting, you're, you're kind of taking the lead. So if you, if you think about it, Larry, I mean, look at what Uber did to taxi drivers. Look at what Airbnb has done to the hotel industry. You know, these are companies that have come out of nowhere and disrupted these established industries. And right now, today, every business leader, regardless of what sector they work in, Every business leader wakes up in the morning with the fear that they're going to pick up the newspaper, turn on the radio, and find out that the next Uber has emerged in their industry yeah. and is exactly. about to eat their lunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right. So that's exactly. what red teaming is. Yeah, and red teaming is designed to help them pr- to become that disruptor rather than one of the disrupted. Oh, and the way it works is Oh, like, really? Okay. Yeah, because isn't it better to disrupt yourself? rather than to wait for someone else to do it. So red teaming is a system that that kind of makes you, as an organization, constantly ask the question, is there a way that we could do what we're doing better? And it has a, there's a whole set of tools and techniques that the military has developed to do this, to help organizations have those conversations with themselves. And that's what red teaming is really about. And it really, at base, it works by breaking strategies down, breaking plans down into the assumptions they're based on, then challenging those assumptions to make sure they're really correct. 
And the uh, uh, military is the perfect place because they train thousands of soldiers every day to be the best they can be, to use their phrase, but also to survive and try to save their lives. And this is what a company is doing. It's much better for a company to just keeping keep themselves fresh in everybody's mind than to just lay there and be very complacent thinking people are automatically going to find excitement in their uh, company every day. Absolutely. And one of the other things that red teaming does is it, is, it includes a, a bunch of tools to help organizations think about them as their competitors would think about them. So you kind of get in the mind of your competitor and say, if I do, if I make this move in the marketplace, what is, what are my competitors likely to do to respond to that? So you kind of, it helps you get inside the head of your competition so that you can kind of beat them to the punch is really the point. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to shift from my, my, uh, um, my restaurant example and and give you a real example from our town in in our town we have a uh, a music store that's been here for decades uh they sell guitars and drums and things like that and then in moves uh guitar center which is a brand name and it's a national name and now all of a sudden the local music store has this brand name and people are going there and i think it's because it's a brand name and i often think i wonder why I mean, the prices aren't any better. Mm-hmm. It's it's just one of those things. So, what can they? What can the first guy do to combat um, a corporate name and a corporate uh, budget for for advertising? So, there one technique that can really help in situations like that. This that that was developed by the U.S. Army is called four ways of seeing. And basically, and I describe this in the book how to use it in detail. But but basically, the idea is you you look at you have a hard discussion with yourself and ask yourself. How do our competitors view us? How do we view them? How do our customers view us? How do they? How do our customers view our competitor? And you and you you kind of work through this discussion, and it helps you see where you stand in the marketplace and where the opportunities and threats are. You know, even if if you look at your example, though, you could take it one step farther out, Larry, Guitar Center right now is being disrupted by Amazon and by the online re- retailers. That's so true, right yeah. now, there is, not a, there is not a single brick and mortar retailer, whether it's a mom and pop or a national chain that is not in trouble because of online retailing. And if you look at that, that's Macy's, Nordstrom, JCPenney, you know, all of these companies are, Sears, are, are against the ropes right now because of they've been disrupted by the online yeah. retailers like Amazon. So, yeah. so you, if you're running one of these companies, whether it's a mom and pop or whether it's Macy's, what you need to do is have a real robust discussion about how can we respond to these things. And Red Teaming helps you do that. One of the things that Red Teaming does, by the way, is a lot of these organizations have the answers inside them. They just have a problem getting at them because of their bureaucracy, because of their hierarchies, because of their group think. So red teaming includes a whole set of tools that's designed to, to get at the truth that resides inside your organization by, by helping surface good ideas from employees, regardless of where they're at in the company, in a way that's constructive rather than destructive. So that's oh one of the gosh. other things that yeah. it does to help. I mean, I'm sure if you've been in business long enough, you you've know of stories who where, where the janitor or, or the mailroom kid uh, had an idea and everybody just brushed it off and 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 that kid went on to be be like the next uh, you know Steve Jobs of his town or something like that um, well good yeah well you know I I I used to be a, a journalist, and uh, you know, for 20 years I watched the newspaper industry going out of business around me, and yet every newsroom I worked in, there were journalists who had great ideas about how to help the paper respond to the online threat, how they help the paper adapt to the new media landscape. And you know what? Those ideas were ignored and not listened to because of the bureaucracy. Mm. All right. Uh, the book is called Red Teaming. How do we get the book, and how do we learn more about the, about red teaming? Other than besides the book, or is it all in the book? 
it, it's it, there's a lot in the book. It goes on sale tomorrow. You can order it today on Amazon or anywhere online books are sold, or you can buy it in any bookstore tomorrow. And if you want to learn more in the meantime, you can go to my website, www.redteamthinking.com or www.brycehoffman, B-R-Y-C-E-H-O-F-F-M-A-N.com. All right, good stuff. Uh, I'm sure everybody with a business has been listening carefully, probably turned up the volume in their radio just to yeah. not miss a thing. I, I, I would say, uh, share the interview with somebody we, we'll put this up as a recorded podcast after we're done um, but most importantly get the book Red Teaming Red Teaming I'm sorry RedTeamThinking.com uh, Amazon of course for the book or BryceHoffman.com B-R-Y-C-E thank you Bryce good stuff thank you guys have a great day alright we'll be right back <laughs> Animus Foundation is the name of the Ocala-based nonprofit sanctuary dedicated to the rescue and rehabilitation of wild and domestic animals. Animus plainly stated needs your 100% tax-deductible donation, which will go directly to animal care. This sanctuary is run solely on donations. There are so many questions to answer. Please call 843-6379 and they will explain to you how these creatures that live among us are cared for. Please call 843-6379. Thank you. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Most of the damage done overseas, but a ransomware cyber attack still having a ripple effect at companies and government agencies worldwide. Stephen Wilson with European police agency Europol. What we see just now indicates in excess of 150 countries affected beyond 200,000 individual victims. With the attack apparently exploiting a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows. A user's screen is covered with a demand for money. Fox News' Simon Owen. Another violent incident streamed on Facebook Live. A Memphis man doused in kerosene, set himself on fire and ran into a bar where a band was playing. One band member saying, It was almost like he waited for us to be over so that he would be the center of attention. The man died at the hospital. The Supreme Court has rejected an appeal to reinstate North Carolina's voter ID law, which a lower court said targeted African Americans with almost surgical precision. Fox News, we report, you decide. Napa know-how that's not heavy metal music or the sound of a stray cat fight. It's your car's not-so-subtle way of saying, head to Napa for new brake pads and rotors and get up to a $50 rebate by mail. So don't confuse for anything other than new brakes and 50 bucks back by mail. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. At participating Napa Auto Parts stores. Offer expires 531.17. There are two things every parent wants when their child goes to college. For their child to do well and a way to afford it. Now, with Discover Student Loans, parents can have the best of both worlds. Not only do our loans cover up to 100% of school certified costs with zero fees, but we'll give them a cash reward for each new student loan if they earn at least a 3.0 GPA or equivalent. That means every A in history or B in math could help them earn a cash reward for good grades. Just one of the many ways we treat you like you'd treat you. Apply now in 15 minutes or less at discoverstudentloans.com. Limitations apply. Yeah, it counts. Hi, this is JP from Pen Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Pen Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Pen Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Here are today's headlines from the source. WOCA Congress is launching a probe into misconduct at the country's largest federal prison. A letter sent from a U.S. House committee last week says it will investigate how the Federal Bureau of Prisons handled egregious misconduct at the U.S. Penitentiary in the Sumter County city of Coleman. The warden and other officials at the prison reportedly got thousands of dollars in bonuses despite female staff's persistent allegations of sexual harassment. A letter from Republican Committee Chairman Jason Chavetz of Utah said four executives at Coleman received tens of thousands of dollars in bonuses despite a sexual harassment lawsuit involving hundreds of current and former staffers. The lawsuit alleges that prison managers repeatedly failed to protect the female staff from years of sexual harassment and threats from inmates. 
An investigation is continuing after a four-year-old boy wandered out of his hotel room during the weekend as his parents slept and then walked onto the John Young Parkway where he was struck and killed by a van. Troopers say the boy who had special needs died on impact. The driver of the van is identified as 56-year-old Mauricio Azokar and he said he did not see the child and that there was nothing he could have done. Authorities say Azokar was not speeding or impaired. Florida Highway Patrol Sergeant Kim Montes says it took about an hour to find the heartbroken parents who say they didn't realize the child had left their hotel room. Troopers will look at hotel surveillance video as they investigate the tragedy. The Department of Children and Families has been called to investigate. The child and the mother were from New York. The father was local. The family was staying in the motel while looking for a home to move into. An Uber driver sexually battered a 14-year-old girl who had used the app for a ride, Osceola County deputies said on Friday. According to sheriff's investigators, the girl used the Uber app to call for a ride from a Kissimmee residence and a vehicle driven by 27-year-old David Pina Milo of Kissimmee showed up. Pina Milo had the girl sit in the front seat where he sexually battered her, according to the report. He then took her to a wooded area and forced her to perform a sexual act. He later dropped her off at her request to destination. Detectives made contact with Pina Milo. He was arrested and booked into the Osceola County Jail. He faces a charge of sexual battery on a person older than 12 years of age, but younger than 18. As we enter the beach-going season, officials are reminding us to swim with caution and never leave children in the water unsupervised. Authorities say four swimmers were rescued from the ocean by lifeguards near Jupiter after nearly drowning. Palm Beach County fire rescue officials say three adults and a child were reportedly in distress on Saturday afternoon near Jupiter Beach Park. Lifeguards dove into the water to rescue the distressed swimmers. The rescued included two people caught in a riptide and two others who became caught in current while trying to assist. Orlando is celebrating a new tourism record. According to Visit Orlando, 66 million people made the city their vacation destination during 2016. That's up by 2 million from the previous mark set the year before. On Thursday, Visit Orlando and the tourism community kicked off a new campaign to express their appreciation to all of those visitors, handwriting thousands of thank you cards. They're calling it hashtag Orlando's Big Thank You. The campaign began by achieving a Guinness World Records title for collecting the most hand written thank you cards in a 24-hour period. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe voting is no accident. Remaining mostly sunny for the rest of the day, an afternoon high 90 to 92, then a mainly clear night, low 67 to 71. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, high 88 to 92, and partly sunny Wednesday, along with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm in spots, high 89 to 92. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Kevin Snyder. Hey, this is Matt Wilkerson from Verizon. You work all day, right? So why would you want to spend your night out shopping for that new phone? Well, Marion County, let me and Verizon help you out. I can deliver to your home or office, saving you precious time. Phone, tablets, internet, home phones, even accessories. Whatever you need, we will deliver free of charge. Call me at the store, 352-528-0020. That's 528-0020. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, Yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we we do that. I need my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on the source. It's time for Farm and Ranch Headlines on the Southeast Agnet. I'm Tyron Spearman reporting. Peanut farmers will be glad to know that the National Peanut Board is getting matching funds this year just by applying. Bob Parker says the 2014 Farm Bill included a provision for commodity boards to obtain matching funds from the National Institute of Food and Agriculture 
and they have applied. In 2015, the National Peanut Board was one of two national commodity boards to submit applications for research topics to NAFTA. Uh, the two topics were accepted for a $400,000 investment, and they became eligible for a $400,000 match. Research projects were on drought tolerance and water use efficiency in peanuts, and boy, that's what we need today. I need a good rain, too. But it will be funded in 2017. The farmers across the peanut bell will reap the benefits of this research. In 2016, they worked with other organizations in the peanut industry and had research topics approved that provide matching funds of $650,000. Through programs such as NIFTA, they provide that provide matching funds. The National Peanut Board is leveraging their limited funds, and grower dollars are stretching even further to help in production research. The Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP, is a continuous sign-up program allowing landowners or operators to apply for financial and technical assistance for many types of conservation practices. And USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service in Florida has made it easy to get more details. Just log on to www.fl.nrcs.usda.gov. You'll find state resource concerns along with links to more detailed information on the overall EQIP program. Or you can simply stop by your local USDA NRCS office. Argentina's reporting this week that they're having more rain. They're trying to harvest their crop. Only 10% has been harvested, they said, and it looks like it'll be a while before they get back into the field with more rain predicted. I'm Tyron Spearman for Southeast Agnet. Robin, how do you like my design? You're designing a box? That's not a box. It's a doghouse. Rough draft for your rough rough? Sounds like you need personal service. I do? Yes, to print the blueprints. See Mark at the Personal Service Center. He can print blueprints, notarize permit applications, print and mail out invoices, and even provide great-looking business cards. Personal Service Center. That's the one on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, right? Just look for the yellow signs. Your pedigree palace will be a reality in no time. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It may hit your car, your house, or worse. So call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all those headaches before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 572-2510. That's 572-2510. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala!